Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your host, That Creepy Reading, and today I present another anthology of Creepypastas. Yes, we take the worst of the worst the Creepypasta community has the offer on the Some Ordinary Gamers Wiki, whether that is requested by you in the comments on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, whatever, or whatever. We just take crappy pauses and we read them and we make fun of them. So, yes, today we got Rayman 2 Damned Shotgun.exe followed by Mario Party. Dear God, let's hope I don't blow my brains out. This is Crappy Pauses, everyone. Let's begin. It all happened about a week ago. I just downloaded Project 64 and I was searching for a ROM hack of Rayman 2 The Great Escape. While searching, there was a hack that caught my eye. This is the description. Play Rayman 2 like never before. New original character models, more levels, and three total hours of extra gameplay. Download here. I was, um, well, genuinely interested by that. So I then downloaded it before I realized that this was a totally original ROM. I dragged a ROM into the documents folder and then launched the game. When it started up, no copyright screen showed up. The title screen was weird. Rayman, um, the Rayman logo was a tad rusty and there was no sound or background music cliche playing. There were dead teensies scattered around. One even had their entrails ripped out. I, I wasn't really bothered, but, you know, it's a little unnerving. After all, I mean, like, it was just a simple ROM, right, everyone? I created a new file, then started the game. The opening theme played, but all that I heard was faint static. The characters were speaking some unknown language. It almost sounded like Simlish, to be honest. But... There were subtitles on the bottom of the screen. When I started playing, I realized Rayman had the combat mechanics from Rayman Origins as Legends, rather than the shooting plasma blasts. I tested the attack on Globox. He then fell over. Lifeless. Weird. Um, then I went to the first level. The river was red. With blood. I was kind of freaked out, but I, I continued on. Then I encountered the first original model. It was um, a livid stone from Rayman 1, Origins and Legends. Uh, it, it tried hitting me with a stick. I dodged the attack and then hit the enemy in the stupid face. Blood came out of the live stone's nose and mouth and then he fell over. DEAD! Instead of inflating and popping. I wasn't really freaked out at this point, but then my roommate walked in and asked what I was doing. I told him I found a strange ROM hack for Rayman 2. He then told me his favorite childhood game was also... Rayman 2. I then, let, I then let him play the hack for a bit and he said this was the best hack ever made. But then, on the second level, we saw something grotesque. When Rayman punched a dark tune. Another Rayman Origin slash Legends enemy. The Dark Tune exploded. Blood and organs were everywhere. But the blood was hyper realistic. My roommate got really nervous and then ran to the toilet to throw up. I continued playing. Then I saw something truly frightening. It was a dark Rayman. Oh, he must be in Detroit. But. His eyes were black with red dots, and he was crying blood. He said something in Latin which translated to, Your friend is weak. You give up soon, too. My blood ran cold, because I have no idea how I would remember such a detail. I didn't know how to spell it in Latin. Then, a life bar for the demonic Rayman appeared. I tried to stay away from the creature. I was hoping that I could find a golden fist, but no luck. I tried to stop the Rayman, but the emulation button was grayed out. I realized that I had to win the game. I punched Dark Rayman and spat out dark, pur and he spat out dark purple liquid. I continued, to I continued to attack the creature until it was dead. The cutscene played Dark Rayman said in Latin, 
You have won this time, but I will find you. Rom then closed. Thank God it was over. I then deleted the file. When threw it in this recycle bin, the computer made weird hissing sound. I permanently deleted it. I then heard an unintelligible whisper. I then realized that it was all over. I hope nobody else finds this ROM and plays this ever. Well, that was something. Shit. I, I don't even know if that was like, what? What? <sighs> Moving on to shotgun.exe. The group. The group of software developers gathered for a meeting. They were unsure what to do next, being as they just released a new game. One suggested that the group take a break, but the boss said no. A now fired employee suggested we build a game similar to Call of Duty, but with a touch of magic to it. It was similar to World of Warcraft, being as you had to be a warrior, mage, or rogue. It was, however, Wizard's Last Witch, because everyone knows that, you know, the equivalent to a wizard is not a sorceress, but a witch. And, you know, a warlock, you know, yeah, warlocks are, but, fuck this story. <sighs> Depending on the gender of your character. You could also be a soldier. You had to be, um... You had to paired in teams. You had a rating and experience. Your experience was skills. Those experience points would give you different guns. However, the now fired employee messed with the game, ruining the design, and turned it into a sadistic program that would horrify millions if it had been released. He renamed it Shotgun.exe. The game. The game was completely destroyed. The boss fired the employees as soon as he found out about this information. He then decided to check out the game. When he finished, he said he had to leave work early and never came back. The next boss that was interested in the game decided to play it. He came back after, but all he did was stand there ominously looking at the employees, warning everyone not to play the game. He told everyone to tell the new boss to never play it. He then died right there in the building. Upon the autopsy, the medical staff found out they died of gunshots. Upon searching what type of gun would fire this type of bullet, they immediately realized, almost on the spot, it was from a shotgun. Yeah. The new boss sent me to file because I was an intern at the time. He knew of the danger and wanted me to post to the internet what I had discovered. Wait, 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 wait. Why the fuck? What, what did I just read? Okay, okay, take a look at this. Take a look at this. He knew of the danger and wanted me to post of the internet. The new boss sent me the file. Just tell him to post on the internet. Don't give him the file. What the hell are you... I lost hope in humanity. That creepy reading.exe has failed. Continuing anyway. <sighs> the new boss sent me to file because I was an intern at the time. He knew of the danger and wanted me to post to the internet what I had discovered. It was beyond horrifying, but actually wanting to play this game, I booted it up. I wanted to know what was so horrifying about it, or at least at the time. I wish it never played that game. I, I really do, but enough chit chat, let's describe the game. You start off with a startup screen. There are two buttons, play and quit. I hit play, being as that was how you started up the actual game. It gave me a choice, knight or wizard. I chose knight, being as how my Yu-Gi-Oh deck involves knights. It loaded up with a burnt down village. The king's mutilated corpse lay besides my character with the head on my sword. The queen's head showed one of shock, and the corpse lay beside the king's corpse. A sound file played with a sad, sadistic voice that was cold as vanilla ice and as dark as a void. This voice said, Oh, 
How cute. Looks like it wasn't too happy of an ending for them. <laughs> what a shame. I played a tailor. Um, my, my character was one who had destroyed this perfect village. At least I can move them now and maybe move along with the game. I headed to the throne and then I realized I could use commands like slash sit. The game responded with a text box. Move corpse of the prince to sit in the chair. I typed in slash move in a response to that and then the game responded with another text box. Your life will be no more in 20 hours. The end question mark. It's been 19 and a half hours. I'm waiting at the police station because of this game. Here he is now. I'm ready. Police report. Resident Michael Mather. Like Eminem, really? Resident Michael Mathers has been shot inside a police station by an unknown figure. Forensics confirmed that the bullet to use, used to kill Michael Mathers was from a shotgun. There was an interesting thing about this case, however. There was a few mentions of the crime called Shotgun Daddy XE. I might play the game soon. I could find a clue to why this happened. Fuck this story. One middle finger. Alright, moving on to Mario Party. Mario Party. Before you think this might be bad or not, this is my first attempt at writing a creepypasta, so please give me feedback and I hope you enjoy. You broke the cardinal rule of creepypastas. Don't tell me that you're writing a creepypasta. Moving on. Creepypasta. Me and my friend Zach and Michael used to play the original Mario Party every weekend. We'd never get bored of it and we'd never get angry at the end for someone else winning. When my friends moved because their parents got better jobs, which has required them to move, I was heartbroken. I didn't play Mario Party as much as I used to, and since computer players are no fun, oh my god, someone's a Nintendo fanboy, when the weekend came along one day, I felt bored and I decided to play Mario Party, since there was nothing else better to do. When I went to the main menu at the Toad Village, I went to the warp pipe to depart for adventure. I picked my favorite Mario character, Luigi, and then I can well, just pick the computer players to play, Wario, Peach, and Mario. I picked them on hard difficulty, and I went to my favorite board, Luigi's Engine Room. I picked a 50 turn game, since I didn't want to get bored that easily, and then I went to the usual bland story, and I rolled some dice to see who went first. Peach went first, Wario got second, Luigi me got third, and finally, Mario got last. Once Koopa Troopa gave the coins to everyone, and it was time to play, Peach rolled and got a 4 and a blue space, plus 3 coins of Peach. That's when I noticed something was definitely wrong with the game. When Peach got the 3 coins, she was in first place, which made her picture at the top right smile. And when the other computers, me and the other people, got second place, our pictures went sad. I, I don't know if this is a trick of my mind, but I somewhat liked it. It gave realism and made you want to win and be that superstar. Once all of us got our roles, we played our first minigame, Platinum Peril. Basically, a game where you platform and you try to make it to the end, making jumps and avoiding bricks and pyramids. When the game started, the computer AI was a lot more challenging than usual and showed more competitiveness, which made it difficult to catch up with them. At the very end, Wario won, and I was shown the results screen when the um, coins were given to, well, you know, when the points were given, the positions were changed, there were new character pictures than just, well, going up or down. Since I was at third place, I showed Yuigi at him at the verge of tears. Mario at the very last was crying. I could see tears in his physical eyes. And as the game pressed on, the chance time space was a lot more harsh than usual. Instead, it was take all coins, take all stars, and new. And then there was a new Bowser tile, though it only shone when you got the Bowser chance at the time. When I landed on the Bowser space, I mumbled, "Great." 
I was also given a new Bowser punishment, eliminate. I was kind of hoping of not getting it, and I didn't barely. At the end of the last turn, I was in first place, and in second place was Wario. When it was Peach's turn, she rolled an eight and landed on the Bowser. Peach was given the Peach was um given punishments, and eliminate was on there. Oh no! I figured my heart was beating as we were watching. Bowser's face as we were watching it as it landed on Bowser's facelift. I sat in relief. Bowser said, All right, elimination it is. And I can't take this seriously. I was confused. But it said facelift! I yelled at the TV. I watched as Peach was taken off by the screen by Bowser. The screen cut to black, and it showed the same as Bowser's chance time screen. It was in a different location, though it looked like it was at the it was at the Bowser's Magma Mountain stage. My head was starting to hurt. What was going on? Only one tile rolled extremely fast, and you couldn't see what was on the tile. Peach was on the floor praying. What the fuck? But was it saying anything? Even though her lips were moving, she hit the block with full force and her tile came up. Slowly, she started to cry loudly and full of pain. Bowser came off the screen, and a text box appeared saying, Well, Peach, it looks like it's time to go. Peach started begging for mercy, and for another chance, Bowser laughed and hauled her over his shoulders. Peach bangled her legs into spikes, and her leg went through them. I saw sp Peach desperately trying to get her leg free, but she couldn't. I couldn't believe what I saw. Peach was violently taken by Bowser and now was gone. Would it be permanent? We were returned to the board, and I noticed that Peach's box was no longer there. It was only me, Mario, and Wario. When we played our final minigame, I tried as best as I could to concentrate, but I couldn't. Now it was time to see who won. Me and Wario were tied for stars at the start. Mario, however, had a lot of coins. For the minigame, it was Mario. For the coin star, it was Mario. And... For hoping. What the fuck? Okay. For the minigame, it was Mario. For coin star, it was Mario. And for happening star, it was Mario. Mario won, winning all the bonus stars. Thankfully, I had more coins than Wario, and I got second. The ending was different, however. There was no victory music playing, and Mario and Luigi raced off the boat before it flew away. It then showed Wario being tortured by Bowser. A text box appeared saying, You lost the game, and you must pay the price. Another text box said, B -b Please, Bowser. Bippity boppity boopity ba. I promise I will try hard to please just let me go. Bowser laughed as a text box said, You know, I cannot do that. Wario was dragged by his tiny legs off the screen. Wario was scratching the floors violently. Once and again, it blacked out. I was in a place where it seemed very comfortable yet very different, as if I was in another world. I got up and I was, greeting, I was greeted surprisingly by a man in blue overalls and a red shirt, white gloves, and a red hat with the word M on it. On it was a big nose and mustache. He said with a sad look, Come, brother. It's time for the funeral. I looked at the mirror next to me, and I dropped it. I was Luigi. I couldn't do nothing. Are you fucking kidding? You were Luigi. 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 I couldn't do anything but follow what Mario said. We went to Peach. I could do nothing but cry. The chief toad said with a very long, sad, tearful speech. I looked at the coffin of a speech, a peach, and it showed where the it showed the spots where the legs were stuck in Bowser's shell, and I saw her eyes open again, smiling cruelly with a sewed smile, and that's when I collapsed. I woke up in my own bed again. I rushed over to the TV and I saw the TV it had three words on it. Thanks for playing. I turned off the N64 and I sat there motionless, and I sat there until the doorbell go off. 
I went over to the door and saw my old friend Michael who had moved. He was smiling and sad. That was one great party last night, wasn't it? That Mario Party game was intense. I'm sorry I was barging in so early. I, I forgot something. I was confused. Wait, didn't you move? He looked at me as if I was joking. Stop playing dumb. Remember I said I, I said I would never get angry if someone wins. He got on his jacket and he got on his jacket. He lost, he said to me. Well, Luke, it looks time it's time for me to go. I watched him walk away with what looked like spikes protruding out of his back. I was stumbling back. I could barely what the fuck am I re- What the- What- What am I reading? This is glorified fanfiction. Oh my god, this isn't even creepy. This is just weird. Jesus. <sighs> Alright, let's finish this off. I turned around to see Luigi and Mario looking at me with a look of anguish on their face. He looks like- it's someone else who wants us to depart for an adventure. We should have kept them awaiting. And that's the end. Fuck it. I, I don't even care. No, no, no. I don't even care. That. This is terrible. On to the review. Rayman 2 The Damned. I. At this point, I'm unsure if this is a legitimate creepy pasta or if this is some sort of joking pasta. Nonetheless, it was terrible. It was quite frankly terrible. It was written well enough so where I could at least take it seriously as a story, but it was written bad enough where I could at least make fun of it for all of its stupid cliches. Essentially, the story just... <sighs> With lines like, with red blood, and then he fell over dead, and then, you know, with the guts, and it even says hyper-realistic. I didn't add that. It says hyper-realistic right here. You can see it. It says, but the blood was hyper-realistic. I don't even know if that's, like, a joke or if this, like, was, like, some 12-year-old kid trying to make a creepypasta. The only thing I know is that it's hilarious. Oh my god, this is absolutely terrible. Um, there, there's not really much I can say. There's every cliche in the book. It was a ROM hack. Um, it had over-the-top writing with... I mean, I mean, like, at least it has MLA format. It's easy to read. Um, what else? Yeah, it's Rayman. At least they didn't go for something stupid like Outlast.exe. So, can someone make Outlast.exe and send it in? Please do. No, make... Just... just just make, pick any new game and then just put .exe on it and then send it me and I'll probably read it. I'm not even fucking with you. Oh my god. That was hilarious. Okay. Moving on to shotgun.exe. It was short. It was bitter and it was awful. Um, what does this story have? Okay, why don't we go through its first pitfalls. Shotgun.exe. Remove the .exe. Remove the shotgun. Remove the story. It's terrible. Okay, so we begin, and it says, The Group. And it tells us about software developers. We're not given any specific name. We're not even told what time period this is. Now, it says... Uh, someone suggests a Call of Duty with magic. What? And then they say it would be similar to World of Warcraft. Have you played World of Warcraft? There's no intersection between the two. There is none. World of Warcraft is an MMO where you play as magical elves that beat the shit out of other magical elves and goblins and you, you get the picture. I, I played, I'm, I'm kidding, but nonetheless, it was terrible. It was similar to World of Warcraft as you'd be, be playing warriors, mages, and rogues and then you get kills and apparently you have guns too? What? And then you also had like the slash sit command. What is this? World of Warcraft or Call of McDuty? I don't know. It's the creepy McBister group. Jesus. Anyway, the fact that it's so impersonal makes it really bad. It could probably look better, but this thing really just needs more detail. 
detail is the key word here. You may notice that no, it doesn't say anyone's name. It doesn't, like, it says boss, flyers his employees. By the way, I'm going to go to restaurant to get drink and eat it with toothpick. You know, it's so impersonal that I can't care about anyone. There's no story here. It's quite literally, hey, my boss is retarded. He got killed. The end. And then this guy talks about the game. And apparently there's only two glasses, night and whiz- what? Okay, that's weird. Um, and he's playing this game. Oh, wait, why is he even playing the game? As I think I said in the narration, the boss told him, sent him the game. Why send him the game? Just tell him, hey, write a report, fax a memo, no one plays the game, then delete it. Enough said. End of discussion. But no, he actually sends him the file. Why, why send him the file? I could maybe understand if the first boss died, intern goes into his office and sees the game running, then plays it. That, that would be... Stretched a bit, yes. But it would make more sense than, hey, here's a magical game that got me killed. Have fun. Bye. Jesus fucking Christ. This is terrible. Terrible. Oh my god, it makes me wanna- Oh, and then, like, the end. We, we got this. End question mark. What are we, 1950s B-horror movie? Uh, it's been 19 and a half hours and I'm waiting for the police station. Because of the game. Here it is now, go, I'm ready. Apparently there's a police report where Michael Mathers, Eminem, is in the story apparently. Michael Mather, or Mathers. Has been shot inside a police station. Unknown fi- What? What? No. I give up on you. Shotgun.exe. Go burn. Okay, moving on. Okay, Mario Party. There wasn't really very much physical commentary I can make on this game, but this thing is just... Fan fiction bullshit. I mean, like, the character doesn't power fantasy it. He has himself lose. He has it be interesting. But, um, they went overboard on the gore. They really did. Having uh, Princess Peach get impaled on a spike would never happen. And it, even on a N64 game, it would look terrible. It w you, you didn't describe it at all either. It's just, oh, got him. Fuck, it got him impaled on a spike. Fuck. But no, 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 no. No, no, I can. No, I cannot forgive that, but I can move on. Okay, so she gets impaled on this spike, and then, yeah, the game continues. Everyone has, like, weird pictures, and yeah. Then Wario loses, and he, um, gets pulled off, and apparently, like, killed or whatever. <sighs> I, I don't know what the significance of that is. Um, it, it just seems to be there for shock value, and it's not shocking after I've heard it a billion gajillion times. The character, and in a movement of what I only can describe as complete, pure, and utter bullshit, mix in a blender of what the fuck did I just read. And essentially, the main character wakes up, and he's apparently Luigi. I only can- I, I picture the Smosh dudes dressed as uh, Mario and Luigi doing their own thing. Like, in those, like, hyper-realistic costumes. And then they go to Peach's funeral, and what? Like, what? Okay, um, let me, let me see who wrote this. I, I don't know if he put his name on here. No, he, he didn't credit himself, but... He, um... If you're gonna write a creepypasta, or... Yeah, if you're gonna write a creepypasta, don't put yourself in the story. Or if you do, don't be like, I woke up and had nightmares and I saw Princess Peach in my dreams. It's overly done. Please, this isn't scary. It sounds like horrible, bad fan fiction. Also, don't ever say that this is your first creepypasta or you're looking for feedback. Just write the creepypasta and feedback will come. Like me, because I'm, 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 of course I can give the greatest feedback in the world. But nonetheless, Mar oh god, please shoot me. Um, yeah. It turns out that his friend was Peach or Wario, and he got impaled. And 
Yeah. But apparently they had him, um, had Peach praying for some reason. I don't know anymore. I really don't. This is weird. All right. That was crappy pastas. Sorry I've been on a short hiatus for a week, but I had to actually go do my own things. Be sure to stay tuned this Thursday as I am doing a birthday live stream where I will be live streaming on my birthday and you have a chance to win games like Guns of Icarus Online. It may be my birthday and you may want to donate or fucking give something to me because of that, but I feel that it's best to give back to the community who's given me so much. This has been That Creepy Reading and I'm signing off. See you later.